Warning, I'm feeling spicy today. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Caitlin and I like to film eyeshadow palette ranking and review videos, as well as the occasional other content sprinkled in. So if you like indie makeup, if you like eyeshadow palettes, if you like me, I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button because I post two videos every single week. I was about to say day, that's not true. Every single week. And for those of you that are not new here, my face is happy that you are seeing it again. And I was torn between filming this video and filming like a first impressions video. Um, this is not going to be a first impressions, but I promised you all a video with the Unearthly Cosmetics Dreamer collection and I will deliver on that promise because I am a woman of my word. I was torn between filming the first impressions video and this video today because the palette for the first impressions kind of goes with this outfit a little bit more than, I mean, ah. Whatever. Anyways, I was going to film that video, but I'm in a very irritable mood. And I was like, you know, I don't think I want to film a first impressions when I'm not in a great headspace. But then I was like, do I really want to do a chatty get ready with me when I'm not in a great headspace? That doesn't seem like a good idea either. But I knew my topic was going to just be like my pregnancy experience overall and maybe just some like, I don't know, anecdotes type of thing. So just related to being a pregnant person. <laughs> Anyways, so then I thought, you know, this might be the video to be a little spicy. I do want to give a disclaimer that uh, I can only speak to my experience as a pregnant person. So if anything I say deeply offends you because your pregnancy experience was different, from the bottom of my heart, I do not care. Like, I am so tired of seeing people comment on other people's videos about, like, talking about pregnancy and being like, that's not how it was for me. Cool. That's cool. I'm glad it wasn't like that for you. Nobody is saying that it was. The, the experience of pregnancy is different for everybody. So that's my disclaimer. What you're about to hear is just my experience. And it's probably not the exact experience of literally anybody else. So take... With that, what you will, and let's go ahead and get on into it. I'm just like trying to mentally prepare myself for the comments because comments lately have been, some of them have driven me up a wall. Some of you are really, really funny, and I tell you that in the comments because you make me laugh, um, and I really enjoy the comments that you leave. Some of you, I'm just like, Damn, like some of you are so literal, so literal. Oh my God. Um, so I don't know. I need to figure out a way how to like <laughs> put like, I'm joking <laughs> on videos because I'm like, ah, some of the comments I get and it's, and it's when I get this, it's not even like, if it's the first one, I'm like, oh, okay. They, they like misunderstood me. Not a big deal. But when it's like kind of the same thing and then it happens like again and again and again, I'm just like, oh my freaking, like, I don't <laughs> And then I start to like pin a response. So then I'm like, maybe that will deter people from saying the same thing because it starts, it starts to get really annoying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it starts to get really annoying. I love all of you and I appreciate the engagement. But yeah, that's been driving me up a wall a little bit lately. And my hair is getting, falling out of the bun because I'm getting a little too crazy with my head motions right now. So I don't want to complain. Like I, again, appreciate people commenting and engaging and, you know, leaving comments, whatever. So please continue to leave the comments. I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from leaving comments, but I was talking to somebody at work and they said that basically we all have an F's to give gas tank. So we all only have so many F's that we can give day to day. And a majority of mine are being used to create a human. And then on top of that, each night, because I have acid reflux, that's like really, really bad if I eat anything that's not a banana or oatmeal, I don't sleep well. So that's also why I think I've been coughing. I'm pretty sure those are connected. <laughs> I thought it was like COVID lingering, but I'm pretty sure. It's hard to tell because the acid reflux started around the time that the COVID ended. So it's like, am I coughing because of having COVID or am I coughing because I have really bad acid reflux? The world may never know. Anywho, there's nights I don't get a lot of sleep. So then my F's to give tank doesn't really replenish and I'm out of them. I am, I'm out of them. So 
That's really where the comment thing is coming from. <laughs> and last night I didn't sleep well. Not because of any reason, like, pregnancy related. There's a little bit of, like, pregnancy insomnia. That's a symptom that some people experience. I think I have that a little bit. Like, I just have, like, a lot going on in my mind and it's hard for me to sleep. But also, uh, so I have two, I have three dogs. I think you've seen the two that I'm about to make. Well, if you have, if you've followed my channel, I did like a, my dog picks my makeup video for two out of my three dogs. I haven't done one for Cash yet. And, um, he, if you comment down below, if you want to see that, those videos didn't get a ton of views, but they're really fun. And I also feel really bad because Cash is like my heart dog, if you've ever heard of that. <laughs> and I haven't done one with him yet. I feel guilty that he doesn't have one on my channel. But anyway, so let me know if you want to see that. But long story short, I have three dogs. Two of the, the two that I have done that video with, Ellie and Buddy, they are very scared of fireworks. And you might be like, okay, February, why are we talking about fireworks? Great freaking question. Why are we talking about fireworks in February? I have, so in the state of Arizona, the only fireworks that are legal are the ones that are on the ground that don't really make a ton of noise. Like, you know, like the snake and sparklers and like the tiny little pops, pop ones, but they're like not loud or whatever. They're kind of lame, if we're being honest. Those are the ones that are legal here. Uh, well, nobody here cares about which fireworks are legal or illegal. So there's tons of people who buy a ton of illegal fireworks and shoot them off. For for me, in my neighborhood, I have a neighbor that shot them off every night between December 23rd and January 6th, every single night. And they didn't shoot, like, on Christmas Eve, Christmas, and New Year's Eve, they shot off a lot of them. New Year's Eve in particular, they shot off a ton. Um, but every other day, it was just one, <laughs> like one random loud bang. And because they live so close to me, it goes off. And it, I mean, I don't blame my dogs for being scared because it is, it's freaking loud. Like it is, um, The I also have neighbors behind me that shoot off the fireworks. In their defense, they only did it on New Year's Eve, but they shot them off. And it, I literally had looked outside because I thought stuff was hitting my house. Like, it sounds like a freaking cannon being launched into my house. So I know these are not the legal fireworks here. I know that they are shooting off illegal ones. Anyways, I'm not a snitch, so I haven't said anything. But they continue to randomly set them off. They pick a random day to just set off some fireworks. And, it's, and I have the two dogs that are scared of it. And I have made my peace with like New Year's Eve and 4th of July are not going to be great nights for me. That's fine. Other people need to have their fun. I get it. Why do we need to have fun with fireworks every single freaking day? Like, what are we celebrating? You know, I, I, I literally hate it. <laughs> like, I, I, it drives me up a freaking wall. And it's, and this is what drives me even crazier is because it's like such a consistent thing. Any loud sound now they're scared of. So if somebody, there's like a business that's kind of close-ish to us that if there's a dumpster, if somebody throws something into the dumpster and it hits the bottom of the dumpster when it's empty, I have scared dogs. Like it's just created such an anxiety for them that it's like so, so annoying. <laughs> All that to say, last night, <laughs> somebody I don't know what the loud sound was. It wasn't loud. I don't think it was loud enough to be a firework or maybe it was somebody setting off a firework like far away, but it was louder than like the dumpster sound. It was louder than like a car door slamming. That scares them too. It was a loud bang. I don't know what it was, but I, I don't think it was a firework. If it was, it was a far away one. But anyways, they were freaking out. My youngest dog, Ellie, decided that she could not sleep unless she was literally laying on top of me. And so I did not get a ton of sleep because she was scared. And I feel bad for her when she's scared. Like, what am I going to do? Kick her down and make her be scared on the ground? No. I don't know where... We haven't even talked about pregnancy stuff, have we? Oh, a little bit, I guess. But so yeah, so that's why I didn't sleep well last night. So I think that's why I'm irritable today. I'm just like so annoyed. Also, my back hurts, but that's because I was standing and walking for a little while earlier. <sighs> So now my back hurts, but yeah, let's chat about 
pregnancy. I was debating, like, I, I've really been intentional to not really do content just focused on this because I feel like I'm a beauty channel, makeup channel, kind of specifically an eyeshadow palette channel, if, if I'm being honest with myself. But the, uh, I, so I was like, I don't really want to create content about pregnancy or anything like that because I feel like when I was younger and my favorite YouTubers started doing all these videos that were all just like related to pregnancy and being pregnant and having a baby and then having a kid and toddler and whatever, like I just, I, that really turned me off of their channels because I wasn't, I wasn't in that phase of my life, so I, I didn't care. <laughs> and I didn't really want to watch it <laughs> so uh so yeah so I was like I'm not gonna do that like I'll keep it to this and I also just feel like people don't know me in re like you know like a lot like I, I I don't reveal a lot of personal information about myself I feel like I feel like I've done more chatty get ready with me's later get ready with me's lately so I feel like I, a little bit more of my personality is like out there but you know, traditionally I've kept it kind of somewhat straight to business on giving you the palette and not really showcasing my personality and thoughts and opinions as much. But anyways, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> I think I was just pretty much going to say like I was planning on not doing this kind of content, but here we are and we're going to do it anyway. I just decided that um, there's a lot of people on TikTok that have actually asked me for pregnancy updates. And I'm like, that is definitely not the app that I want. <laughs> actually, I feel like I get less negative comments on TikTok than YouTube. So this was maybe a poor choice on my part. Also, if you can hear a noise in the background, my neighbor is doing something to their house. That is also why I didn't sleep well, because they decided to start at 7 a.m. So, anyways, I didn't go to sleep till midnight. Or, yeah, till midnight, and then was awake, asleep, awake, asleep, for various reasons. But anywho, so yeah, so then when I was going to do this video, I was like, you know what? Maybe let's make it a get ready with me and we can talk about pregnancy stuff. So, I don't think I've mentioned it on here. But basically, my husband and I had been trying to decide if we wanted to have kids for a little bit. We've been dating. This year, we will have our 14-year dating anniversary. We've been together since high school. But we got married two years ago. March 5th will be our wedding anniversary. So we were kind of debating it when we were younger he was all about like, I want kids someday, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, maybe, you know, and we were young, you know, like it was like someday felt like so far away. <laughs> like it didn't really feel like something we needed to talk about. And then as we got older, I used to work as a therapist specifically with kids um, birth to age five that were in the foster care system. And I was like, I'm not... I'm not having kids. Like, I I just was, like, adamant. Like, no, that's not in the cards. And he was like, you know what? Like, I could take or leave having kids. Like, I'd rather, you know, like, be with you and have my life with you. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not, it, the kids weren't a deal breaker for him. And then he was thinking about all the things we'd be able to do if we didn't have kids. We could travel. We could do all these fun things. I'm laughing because we're having a kid now, but... <laughs> Um, but he was like, uh, you know, we could do all these fun things. And, you know, he really got on board with that idea. And we were like, cool, yeah, we're never having kids. That did not mean that our families didn't continuously pressure us to try and have kids and uh, to have kids soon, whatever, um, before we were even married. But anyways, um, well, they were more pressuring us to get married. And then as soon as we got married, it was like, now we, were, we needed to have a kid like ASAP. But anyways, so... Around the time that we got engaged, I started thinking, like, maybe I do want to have a kid, like, in the next, like, couple of years. And he was like, you've kind of sold me on the idea of not having a kid. So he was just like, I don't know. Kids are really expensive. And one thing you should know about my husband, the man is frugal. He does not like to spend money on anything 
at all. His, uh, my brother-in-law lived with us for a while, um, at, at our house. Uh, like we used to all rent a house together. And then when my husband and I bought his, this house, he and his girlfriend rented, um, a room with us. But anyways, so, we, so the, one of the first times I think we all went to Target together when we lived in our old house, his brother and I are like adding cart, like stuff to the cart. Like we're just like, oh yeah, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, whatever. So we're like <laughs> stocking up on stuff. My husband finds a pair of shorts and this man like is still wearing shorts from high school. Uh, it's annoying, I know. But anyways, he, <laughs> maybe not high school, college. But anyways, he finds this pair of shorts that he really likes. And I'm like, you should get them. His brother's like, those look good, get them this man checks the price tag they're twenty dollars and he goes nah <laughs> he puts them back <laughs> and i'm just like they're twenty dollars and then both his brother and i were literally like give them to me i will buy them for you because he he won't spend money and you know if you're watching if this is not your first time at this channel you're like perfect opposites attract because you girl obviously do not have a problem spending money so it's we really balance each other out well in that aspect yeah so that's his, that's his thing is he is very much frugal concerned about money <laughs> when we were discussing having kids he was like they're really expensive we can't afford it and we both have really like solid jobs like him and i we we make decent money between the two of us so i was like you know, a lot of people don't make as much of us, but do have kids. So I think we could afford it, you know? And he was like, nah, we don't make enough. And so it was just, so he had these like parameters around how much we needed to make and how much we needed to have saved. And then we could have a kid. All in theory, great financial advice that he had going on, like really respect it. Anyways, Fast forward a few months, we're working on some stuff. We're, we're working on the stuff that he talked about. And uh, he, his brother, so my brother-in-law, got engaged and they were going to get married. Uh, initially, they were thinking like June of this year. Um, so this was obviously last year. But anyway, so they were going to get married June of this year. And they were going to, you know, they were thinking they would have their wedding, you know, in New York. Uh, where her family is and we I told my husband I was like our timeline to have a kid would mean that I would be like I could potentially be nine months pregnant eight months pregnant if things worked out the way that we want them to right in time for your brother's wedding and I don't want I don't want us to either miss it or you know I don't want it to be um like a situation where I'm like close enough, but it's not actually my due date. And then you have to figure out like, do I miss my brother's wedding? Do I not miss my brother's wedding? Like, what do I do? So I was like, I think we should consider starting to try now so that like we could at least be a few months out. Like, so <laughs> I was like, so let's try now. And then timeline wise, we'd have the baby in like March, April. And then we'd be fine. <laughs> to go to your brother's wedding if and then I said and then if we don't get pregnant to like have the baby by March April you know we we cut it off and we uh decide to stop trying for a little bit until then we'd like be having the baby after and he he was for it at that point because we had made progress on our goals we weren't quite exactly where he like had initially set but um a lot of our friends like laughed at him for the, the goals he set and I think that helped him see that he was maybe being like a little bit unreasonable but we did make like better choices financially which is what I think he was overall shooting for to give him credit anywho all that to say so we were like okay so uh I was like I'm going to stop and let me pause before I say this because if you are somebody who has experienced fertility issues or are triggered by talking about um like be, like fertility and stuff like that like maybe skip ahead a little bit um because I just don't want to make anybody feel bad but anyways so the so we decided in May we were like that was May was my um last month that I was taking my birth control so I was like done with birth control in May and my friends had told me to get a period tracking app 
And to start using it like before I started trying to have a kid so that like it had the data of my periods and would be um, able to like give me the best insight from like a when I was ovulating kind of standpoint. So I took their advice on that. I have, I got that, the app I had was like Flow. I like it, but you have to pay for it. But anyways, <laughs> so I got Flow and I didn't pay for it when I was just doing the period tracking, but you know, some of the other stuff when you're like actually trying, you have to pay for. So anywho, so I was tracking it. It was all, you know, fine, dandy, good. And then June, I go off of my birth control and, you know, obviously, the app tells you when you're ovulating. So, oh, you know, we, <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this in a way that's not awkward. But anyway, so yeah, so we, you know, worked on it. <laughs> and I, yeah, that was that. That was, so that was in June. And then the app, you know, kind of counts down. And then the app tells you like, this should be day one of your period. And then, you know, nothing happened. And then it was like, uh, this should, it's, and then it's, I think it's like four days after your period should have started. It goes, take a pregnancy test. <laughs> um, like literally it's like, if you haven't had your period yet, take a pregnancy test. So that was on the 4th of July. We're bringing it back to the fireworks. Cause I was at home on the 4th of July with my stupid dog. That is stupid in the best way. I love him. Sometimes, sometimes I don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love him all the time. I don't like him all the time. But anyways, so my dog was, um, who is very scared of fireworks, buddy. Ellie just started getting scared of fireworks. Tyler and I are wondering if, that's my husband's name, but uh, we're wondering if it's because of like me being pregnant because she lays on top of me with the fireworks now. So I almost wonder if she's like protecting the baby. I don't know. It's So I try not to be mad at her because I think she might, I think it might be cute, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Anyways, long story short. Fourth of July, I don't ever go anywhere or do anything for Fourth of July because it's just a nightmare for my dog. So I stay home with him and my husband's family always does something for Fourth of July. I let him go enjoy that with them and I stay with our dog because that's what I got to do. So anyways, my husband goes to be with his family on the Fourth of July and I'm like, hey, can you pick up a pregnancy test on your way home? Because the app said if I, you know, didn't have my period to, to check it. And he goes, yeah, sure. So he picks it up on the way home. It's like 10 o'clock at night and I take it and it's positive within like 30 seconds. <laughs> like, like it was like immediate. <laughs> and I read on the instructions that it said that, that it takes three minutes. So I'm like, so I walk out of the bathroom and I must have had a like look on my face because my husband was like, what does it say? And I um, was just like, well, it takes three minutes for the results to be ready. And I, when I've told my friends this, they're like, would you think it was going to change back? And I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't want to read it too early. So I, yeah, so we, uh, <laughs> so that's, that. so then he, he went in probably like 30 seconds later and then he comes out with like, he's like, oh my God. So yeah, so, uh, pretty much first try. Like I went off of birth control and was pregnant a week later. And um, that's why, you know, I was just saying to skip ahead because I know that that's not everybody's experience. And we were excited, but uh, I think a little shell-shocked because we really didn't expect it to happen first first time around. I was thinking it was going to take at least a couple months, three months, I don't know. We were excited. Um, but, you know, obviously I was only like, I don't know, what? five weeks pregnant at that point when we found out four five weeks like it was like so early and things could happen right so you're like trying not to get excited but also like trying to be excited I don't know it's a weird it's a weird space to be in it, it was just a fun time and I will say the part of what was fun too is having like that secret with just your husband uh or partner where it's like just the two of you, you know, know what is like what's happening and everybody else is kind of in the dark. Like there is something fun about that. So yeah, so that's kind of the story of us like finding out. <laughs> and um, and then I actually have a TikTok. I don't know if you'd be able to find it. Maybe I should pin it. I'm not sure. But I, you know what? I'll link it down below. But I have a TikTok that shows the clips of us telling our family. It shows us telling my mom. And then I think it's my aunt and uncle and then his dad and then his family. Um, 
so I think that's the order it's in. But anyways, yeah, so it's just a clip of us telling everybody. It's super cute. I love that video. <laughs> I'm so glad we filmed it. I wish I filmed telling my sisters because that was by far the funniest. No, that's not true. The video, some of the videos we got were pretty funny, but my sis telling my sisters turned out to be really funny and I'm so mad I didn't get it on video. I was trying to, but they clocked me. One of them clocked me trying to film our like breakfast and yeah, anyways. So my sisters, we, one of my sister's birthdays was, is the end of August. So we decided to go out to uh or well we decided to go see a psychic for her birthday and his name's bob bob the psychic and he <laughs> we <laughs> i don't even know so we decided to go see the psychic for her birthday we do the reading all together in the room and i told my husband i was like maybe he's gonna say something about me being pregnant and he's like are you gonna say something to them if if he does and i was like i don't know because we weren't we weren't quite at I, 12 we might have been i think we we're at like 11 weeks or something and 12 weeks is kind of like the safer spot to tell you can tell people whenever you want to but um we were kind of shooting for 12 weeks so it was like a little early and i was like i don't know and he was like you should tell them um if he says something or he's like or like get the psychic in on it and i was like i don't know if psychics have ethics i don't want to like an ethical code i don't want to like ruin it by telling him something ahead of time so i was like we'll just play it by ear see how it goes so we go to the psychic three of us are sitting in the room together he does my sister kennedy's first my sister Alyssa's second and then he does mine last and when he's in the middle of either kennedy's or Alyssa's, i don't remember he stops and he turns to me and he goes you have two kids right and i said no i don't have any kids and he was like are you sure about that and i said i am sure that i don't have any kids and he goes because you have a little boy sitting in your lap right now. Like, he was like, so if you don't have a kid, you're having one soon. And I was like, mm. <laughs> like, I just, I was trying to stay so, like, interesting. Like, I just was trying not to give anything away because I was sort of panicking. Like, I was like, like, do I just say it now? Do I just go, actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, uh, so I, I didn't know what to do. So I sort of panicked, didn't say anything, shut him down. My sisters, in hindsight, are, now that they know, are like telling me that I gaslit the psychic because <laughs> I didn't give him anything to work with when he was trying to, to sit, tell me something. But I just like, I didn't want to, I didn't know if I wanted to even tell them yet. So anyway, so I was like, whatever. So uh, it's pretty wild. And then I tell my husband like I'm texting him as we're my one of my sisters was driving and we all went to brunch after that and uh so I text him and he's like you should tell them and I'm like okay so I have my and we we knew we were filming like telling our family so I'm like have my phone on the table and I'm I like have it in my head how I'm gonna say it whatever and get their reaction and I'm trying to like low-key film them secretly but these two <laughs> people <laughs> do not stop talking about their freaking psychic predictions and like i keep trying to like say like i'm like wasn't it funny how he said nothing they're just they're still going they're still talking and i'm like so when he said and i'm like nope and they just keep going and i there's no opportunity for me to interject no opportunity for me to say anything i'm like whatever and then one of my sisters went to the bathroom she comes back and she sees me like holding my phone and she's like, why are you being sketchy with your phone? So then I'm like, moment's over. It's lost. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them. Uh, like, whatever. So then we're in the car and I'm in the front seat. My sister Kennedy's driving and Alyssa is in the back seat. And we are like driving back to my house because I think we all met up at my house or something. But anyways, uh, so we're driving and it just there's finally like a lull in the conversation and it's like a long enough lull that in my brain i go now's your time like just say it now but we're in the car and i can't like what am i gonna film it in the car so i just i just go hey, wasn't it weird how he said that there was a baby sitting in my lap and they were both like yes yeah. so Alyssa's like in the back seat she like leans forward and she's like, uh, yeah, I think we should go to Walgreens and get you a pregnancy test because that was like weird. And um, 
Kennedy's like, yeah, I agree. Let's do it. And I was like, well, we don't actually need a pregnancy test because I already know that I'm pregnant. (laughs) And then (laughs) Kennedy is driving and I need to show you this. (laughs) She's driving. She literally just goes (laughs) and just like stares at me. (laughs) And I am... (laughs) I, uh, yeah, and she's still driving. So then I'm like, oh God, I shouldn't have said anything while she was driving. And then Alyssa starts freaking out in the back seat because she's excited. Kennedy proceeds to then cross three lanes of traffic to whip into a Trader Joe's parking lot that like we were passing. She's just like, like right after. And um, we were fine. It was all good. I don't think there were any cars. So I, so I think it was a safe choice, but it was a little concerning in the moment. She was cute too. She wanted to go to Trader Joe's so she could buy me flowers like to say congratulations, but it was so, so funny. So yeah, it, I just wish I captured it because their faces were hilarious. It was like one of the funniest things I have ever seen. So they're the only ones that I don't have on video and um, I wish I did. That was telling everybody. I'm trying to hit the highlights. Like what are the like milestones of pregnancy that people would care about or are funny stories? Oh, I guess I should mention when we found out gender. So, okay. So I, my husband and I have like family names. I'm not going to mention it here. Uh, because that would probably reveal too much about us. But we have family names that we liked. And so we had a first and middle name already picked out if we were having a girl. And I was like trying to positively manifest that I was having a girl because I really wanted a girl. I, I, I will tell you right now before you're, you finish typing the comment that I know is being typed by at least one person, I hate when people tell me that little boys are better than little girls or are easier than little girls, or you want a boy more than you want a girl, you just don't know it yet. I hate that. I hate it with the very fiber of my being. (laughs) It's my least, it's my least favorite thing. I think it's rooted in the patriarchy and that it continues to diminish the value that little girls have in the world. And I, flip and hate it. I just, it drives me up the wall. So anyways, um, don't comment that is what I'm saying. <laughs> just don't do it. Cause if, unless you're wanting to like get a really sassy response, then go for it. But I, um, yeah, no, I hate it. That being said, wanted a little girl, was trying to positively manifest a little girl. I'm obviously a very girly person, right? Like I do stuff with my hair. I do my makeup every day. I dress, like I'm just a girly girl, you know? So that's why I wanted a girl so bad. But whatever, really what you're rooting for when you are pregnant, you're like, I would really like, like, I was like, I really want a girl, but ultimately what matters is that I have a healthy baby. Because when you find out gender, it's around the same time that they're doing like chromosomal tests and things like that. So you're just hoping for good news anyway. And then gender is secondary to that. We uh, elected to do the blood test to, to have the testing. I know not everybody is a fan of doing the blood testing. I'm not saying that you have to, but we elected to do the blood to do the blood testing for, you know, different uh, conditions and things like that. So we did that. At the same time, they tell you that you can also test for gender. And it's pretty, pretty accurate. You don't have to wait for the 20 week scan if you don't want to. Um, You can find out the gender with this blood test. So I'm like, cool. Yeah, let's do it. And so we do it. And then, um, sorry, I'm going to backtrack for a second. Before we decided to go with the test, when the psychic thing happened, I told my husband, we got to pick a boy name because this guy said that there was a little boy sitting in my lap and I feel like he was on to something. And, um, and my husband was like confident we were having a girl, but every time I referred to the baby, I said he, and I was like, between that and the psychic, I feel like it's got to be a boy. Like I just made, like, I, th- I think I'm sensing something. And then all of my friends, except for one have boys. So my husband was also like, I'm pretty sure you're also just used to babies being boys and that's more what's happening. And he might be right on that. Or I might be right. We'll see. He was like, okay, yeah, we can look at boy names. But he wasn't like really into it at that time. But uh, so he went somewhere. And while he was gone, I pulled up like a thousand boy names and I just went down the list and pulled out any boy name that I liked and put it in my notes app. So I think I had like 20 that I liked. And then I gave the list to my husband and said, star the ones from this list that you like. And we had three. (laughs) He had three on my list of 20 that he liked. Uh, And he did not like any of my top ones. So I was like, all right. Uh, So we had 
the three. And then we were like, okay, well, let's think through middle names because maybe that'll help us decide on like which of these three we would want. And then we, um, you know, we're just going through some names. My husband was throwing out names as like a joke. Um, we're really big Phoenix Suns fans. So he threw out Nash, Grant, Booker, like just being silly, like throwing out all these different names of these Suns players. Well, then one of the first names that we had liked was Hudson. And uh, we, I thought Hudson Nash, like, I think that's a really cool name. And so that's, that's what we decided on. So um, if we were having a boy, we were like, we're going to name him Hudson Nash. Like, that's a cool name. We were like, that kid sounds like he's cool. He's a pilot. Like, he just sounds like he would grow into a, like a really cool adult. And, you know, for us, that's what we cared about. <laughs> and we, so we decided on that name. Anyways, fast forward, do the test. The blood test was right before we went on our trip to Hawaii. So we were in Hawaii and I am stalking my patient portal for those lab results. I'm like refreshing. They said it would take like two days. And so, I'm re but I was refreshing every day <laughs> in it when it was more than two days. But anyway, so I was uh, checking it, checking it, checking it. And yeah, it was pretty funny because I didn't actually need to check it. I got a text alert to tell me when they were ready. So I didn't need to check it every day. But uh, yeah, so so while we were in Hawaii, it was actually our last night there. We were in this like cocktail area that the hotel had where like if I wasn't pregnant, we would have had drinks, but we were just, I think my husband might have. No, I don't think he was drinking. I was gonna say, I think he might have had a glass of wine, but I don't think he did. So I think we were just like enjoying the view um, and, you know, just kind of hanging out. We got the text and it, and it was, uh, we went to Hawaii for his birthday. We get the text and I'm like, okay, are we gonna check it? So we check it, confirm, testing wise, everything's all good. And then it says at the end, at the bottom of the link, it says, reveal the gender, question mark. And I was like, do we want, or do we want to see it? And he's like, yeah. So then click it and it immediately pops up and it's like a little celebration thing. And it's like, it's a boy. <laughs> Was I correct? And like had like some sort of motherly intuition that I had a boy the whole time? I don't know. Um, the psychic was obviously right. Now, the psychic did tell me that I have two kids and my second kid's gonna be a girl, so I don't know. We'll see if he is actually that accurate, but so far, he's batting 100 <laughs> on on his guess. So the, um, at least for me, uh, he also told one of my sisters that they were gonna have three boys, so we'll see how his predictions go. I wasn't going to do a gender reveal party because that's just not personally my jam. Again, I just feel like gender reveal parties one, I don't like surprises. So I didn't, I don't want, and I didn't want a video of like our reaction to like what the gender of our child was going to be. Like, I just, I don't know. I just don't like that <laughs> for me personally. So I, um, so I was just not a fan of that. And then my sisters were like trying to hound me to have one, but, uh, and, I, and they were like, please. And I said, okay, sure. So I caved and I told them we were going to have one but really I knew I was going to check it anyway and I was just going to lie to them and pretend like I hadn't checked it. So, so we checked it, but then I was excited and as soon as we knew, I texted them and I said Bob was right. Uh, so I, I didn't actually lie to them, but I was like still debating having a party just to have like people come over and celebrate, whatever. And then we were like, nah, did not, not really in the mood to throw a party. So we did this thing with our dogs where we tried to make them like these little cupcakes that had blue frosting in it to like at least take pictures to do like a social media announcement. I'll put the pictures up. I'll cover my face for a second to put the pictures up. Uh, but yeah, so we did that. That was a cluster. That was, that was, that was difficult. One, cupcakes, not a great idea. You know why? Big enough for them to put the whole thing in their mouth. Ruins the, the surprise, the effect. So I, I'm anti-cupcake if you're gonna go for that idea. And then two, my dogs pulled the plate with the cupcakes on it off the freaking table onto the bench next to them to eat it. So then, yeah, so putting them on a table, also not a great idea. Do it on the ground. <laughs> it's just not. Learn from my mistakes. I feel like that's kind of it for like milestones and stuff. I'm sure people are wondering how, I'm, how I was feeling. I had a little bit of nausea in the first trimester. Not anything awful. Um, I wasn't, I was 
managing it without any medication. And so that's how I was feeling. Um, and then otherwise, my main symptoms that I have mentioned, and I mentioned them earlier. Oh my gosh, I forgot concealer down here. Uh, I mentioned them earlier, but it's really acid reflux. So I got COVID when I was around 24 weeks pregnant, I think. And I had never had COVID, so that was a bummer because one, I broke my streak of not having had COVID this whole time. I thought I was like a superhuman with some like, um, you know, immune system the government was going to want to study, but I'm just a regular person. So I got COVID and then, and what really sucked is I was going, supposed to go on a work trip and it was to, uh, one of, to another office that, that we have at work. And I was really excited because our entire department was going. And I got COVID, literally I tested positive the day before I was supposed to fly out. And I was like, son of a gun. So I was, I was, I definitely ended up being way too sick to have gone anyway. Um, but yeah, I had COVID so I couldn't go to that and I was super bummed about it because I was really excited. And um, yeah, so I was ex bummed because my streak was broken, bummed because of that, and then bummed because I, you know, I know COVID's not, I know COVID's super controversial. I hope whatever's about to happen in the comments is not COVID related, but it is, um, you know, it's like when you are pregnant and you have an illness, it's scary. Whether it's COVID, a cold, or the flu, whatever, you're just like, uh, I don't, like, is everything okay? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's just not great. Since then, I've had this cough that, like, will start up while I'm, like, 30 minutes after I fall asleep. It's this, like, intense, like, hacking cough. I cannot stop. It's so bad. And so for a while, I thought that was just like COVID lingering. I mentioned it to my doctor. She's like, yeah. And then I told her I had rib pain. She was like, well, yeah, you can't stop coughing and your ribs are expanding. Like, makes sense. So I was like, okay. So I um, thought that I, um, that it was COVID that whole time. And then I started just paying like more attention because I'd have like three days in a row with no coughing. And then all of a sudden I would cough again. And then I just started paying attention and I was like, I think this is like, cause I like would also notice heartburn, but like heartburn's a common pregnancy symptom. So I wasn't, but I just started to notice a pattern and I was like, I don't think I'm coughing because of COVID anymore. I think this is like a GERD acid reflux related like cough, like that, like it's, that's what's causing this. Cause that's what it feels like. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's what I have. I haven't, nobody diagnoses you really with anything while you're pregnant, um, because they're like, eh, it might go away. <laughs> so, anyways, so that's been my main irritation. I love Mexican food. I live in Phoenix, Arizona. We have amazing Mexican food here, and I absolutely adore this Mexican food restaurant that's really close to my house, and we eat there used to eat there all the time. Yeah, I, one night we got it and I just went for it. This was when I was still in the process of like figuring out that my acid reflux was really bad. So bad that like not even Tums could save me. Uh, so I got enchiladas and you, you might be listening to this going, girl, that's why you had acid reflux. <laughs> but yeah, I got enchiladas, had chips and salt. Like I went in, you know? Anyways, that night, I didn't go to bed until four in the morning because I was coughing so much the entire night and I didn't fall asleep. I finally fell asleep at four because I sat up on my couch with pillows surrounding me so that I was like, let's sleep like this, like just sitting up. Like that was the only way I could sleep. So yeah, anyways, since then I've tried to have Mexican food a couple of times. And if I have, I there was one night we had people over and everybody was eating Mexican food. I only ate oatmeal because I knew the Mexican food was going to hurt me. But I was like, let me just have a single chip and salsa, you know, like one, one won't kill me. Uh, no, that was wrong. I had really bad reaction to the singular chip and salsa as well. It wasn't as bad, like it didn't keep me up till four in the morning, but I was coughing a lot after that. So I was like, all right, chips and salsa are out. And then the, um, then we've tried, I've had, like, if I get a chicken quesadilla, but I have the most, bla like, if I make a chicken quesadilla at home with the most bland seasoning on the chicken, I'm talking, like, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and that's it, 
like that's that is the only kind of chicken quesadilla I can eat without having acid reflux. If I get chicken quesadilla with like taco seasoning on the chicken, no, it's really bad. So can't eat that, can't eat any, like pizza's out, anything with a red sauce is, is no, a no. So yeah, so all of my favorite foods are out. I already am not eating cold subs because I've just decided that I personally don't want to take on the risk of eating you know, cold deli meat during pregnancy. I know plenty of people do it and it's fine. And I've had a couple, um, obviously on a accident cause I decided I wasn't going to, but I've had a couple of cold subs, um, when I didn't know I was pregnant. And then when I did know, but didn't know how to tell people that I couldn't eat a cold sub cause we weren't telling people we were pregnant. So I ate one anyway. Uh, yeah. So anyways, all of that has turned out okay. We've, we've lived through. So I know that some people are very much like, don't want pregnant women to think that that's something but anyways for me personally i just it wasn't worth the anxiety or the risks so i don't eat cold subs so my favorite foods cold subs pasta pizza mexican food like all gone <laughs> so all out I, that's not true i can still eat pasta just not pasta with red sauce but like chicken parmesan i absolutely love it's my favorite dish and uh haven't been able to have that in a while but that's okay and um, I know when I finally get to have chicken parmesan or I finally get to eat my Mexican food, have some enchiladas or something for the first time with no, it, I shouldn't say no because I, I had, I, I would get some heartburn just in general. I'm in, I'm in my 30s. So, you know, that's what life is like in your 30s. But not, to, but to be able to still sleep in a Tums just by itself resolves it. It's going to taste delicious. I know it. It's going to slap really hard. That has been my main symptom and complaint this entire time is the acid reflux. So I have read that for some people, the second their baby's born, like I've read women that have said that the second their baby was out of their body, they literally felt the heartburn go away because it's like living with a constant state of heartburn because it's just everything's pushed up to here. And so they said that as soon as their baby was out of their body, they could feel the difference. And then I've seen some women say they like when they had their first meal afterwards, they could they just noticed that 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 feeling wasn't there anymore. And then I've seen some women say that it uh, changed them forever, never went away. And they now have GERD and have to manage that disease post-pregnancy. So fingers crossed that I fall into the first category and not the second. As far as pregnancy symptoms go, it's annoying. Yes, I lose sleep because of it sometimes. Yes, I have to eat different things than I would like. Yes. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not the worst symptom in the world. Um, like I'm not nauseous or throwing up or anything like super significant. So I will be grateful for that. Man, this feels like kind of like a diary entry of like, here's my entire pregnancy experience in one, what is probably gonna be an hour long video. I don't even know what time it is. So those are, th that's really it for me for symptoms. My back in the last, my back hurts if I am standing, walking, bending, doing a lot of stuff. Um, I know you're not supposed to bend over forward, but like, just like if I'm, cleaning or doing things where I'm like moving my body a lot, my back will start to hurt. I do have a belly band, which does help, but that's, it's not like significant back pain. I'm not a side sleeper. So having to sleep on my side has resulted in some hip pain because I'm normally a stomach sleeper. Normally I'll sleep on my side, but I'll also sleep on my stomach. So I usually rotate and my back sometimes, but the acid reflux can't sleep. Um, not that when you're pregnant, you can sleep flat on your back anyway, but I'm basically like propped up on my side as like high as I can go now. But anyways, I, so the back pain's not that bad. My hip pain is just in the morning, like when I'm, it'll kind of wake me up at like 4 a.m. My hips start to kind of hurt a little bit and it'll wake me up. Um, and then I have to work to get resituated and then normally I can go back to sleep. And then when I first wake up, they're, they're sore, but they, by the time I'm like walking around, getting ready and doing stuff, they, they're fine. So all in all, I'm counting myself lucky. Is this something that I would do again? I don't know. Everybody tells me that as soon as you have the baby, you forget all of the bad stuff with pregnancy and it just like goes away. 
and you know we'll see tbd because i told my husband before we got pregnant i was like i want us to have two kids and he was like mm, maybe let's see how it goes and i was like okay but i really want to have two kids i don't want to have one um like i, I want to have two i want them i want them to at least have a sibling and he was like whatever he's like we'll see how it goes so now th there's been multiple times in the pregnancy that i've been like you know, one kid sounds great. <laughs> you just really spoil the crap out of this one kid. And that's it. <laughs> and I know you don't always get to make that choice, right? Like some people have one kid and then try to have a second one and then can't. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm sure I will be reflecting on this, doing a similar video in a few years. And uh, if I'm still on YouTube at that point, and, uh, and we'll all laugh about when I said that I wasn't gonna have a second kid. Um, but anyways, just like I said, I wasn't gonna have the first one. <laughs> Anyway, the pregnancy brain is real. I had heard people tell me that before, but it's real, real. I'll give you a funny pregnancy brain example. Well, first of all, when my husband and I went to Vegas, we, nobody knew we were pregnant yet. We just went, I, we were meeting up with friends in Vegas and I couldn't like cancel on them. So being in Vegas pregnant is, uh, it was still fun. It's not as fun though. <laughs> I will say that. So, uh, yeah, so we went to Vegas, we went to a drag brunch, and everybody else was, like, having bottomless mimosas and the best time ever, and I was so jealous, because I was like, damn it, um, but it, no, it was okay. We, we still had a good time. I, actually, the drag show was hilarious. I forget which one we went to, but, no, just don't remember. It was at Treasure Island, Senor Frogs, at Treasure Island, whatever drag brunch they put on. So, the show itself was so funny, so even even though I wasn't able to drink, it was still a really good time. Um, I was just jealous because everybody I was with was drinking bottomless mimosas, and, like, I couldn't, you know? <laughs> so, we... Uh, what was I going to say about Vegas? Oh, we... So, when we went to Vegas, I forgot contact solution. I forgot my glasses. And if you're somebody who wears glasses... Like, you know, <laughs> those are very important things to have packed with you. So I have never in my life forgotten my contact case or contact solution. Like, I, when I was a younger and, like, in college and would go to parties and knew that maybe I wasn't coming back home that night, I uh, put a little thing of contact solution in my contact cases, or my contact lens case and my glasses in my bag, just in case, because... Like I said, if you're a glasses or contacts wearer, you know, you know, you know what, how that goes. You got to have all this, all the supplies. So somehow I forgot those. I forgot deodorant. I forgot, what else did I forget? I don't remember. But ironically, I had filmed myself packing to do like a pack with me for TikTok. I ended up deleting it because why, why show me pack? <laughs> <laughs> forgot everything. So anyways, I had filmed it for TikTok. <laughs> That's probably why I forgot everything as well. But anyways, I was distracted. But yeah, so I uh, forgot a whole bunch of stuff. And so then I was talking to my mom and she was like asking how the trip was. And I was like, oh yeah, well, I forgot everything. So I had to spend $20 on a contact lens case at our hotel. And uh, anyways, she was like, wow, struggling and then when I told her I was pregnant later I was like that's why I forgot everything she's like ah the pregnancy brain got it <laughs> so yeah so that was my one example of pregnancy brain my other example is at work when I started in my new role they were showing me these spreadsheets and we compare everything to 2019 results and I was like why why do we compare to 2019 and they were like well uh because we want to compare like pre-covid to post-covid and I was like Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I, oh, the way I had phrased it was, what happened in, did something happen in 2019, or in 2019 or 2020? And they were like, uh, the, the pandemic in 2020? I was like, hmm, yeah, I think I remember some, hearing about that. <laughs> Anyways, so that was my, those are my examples. Oh, my really good example of pregnancy brain actually just happened recently. So I went to the movies with my Nana and my mom, went out my front door. Normally, uh, we go in and out through the garage at our house. We don't really go through the front door. So I go with my, my mom picks me up and, uh, so, cause we all drove over together. And, uh, so I come home and I put the key in the lock and the first lock turns, put the key in the second lock, second lock turns. 
put the key in the last lock and I can't get it to turn. It like won't unlock. And my husband was actually, he was working from home that day. So I'm trying to like call him and text him, but he was in a meeting, but I'm like, can you let me in? And uh, finally he was like, he was able to get up in the middle of this, his meeting and um, come let me in. And I was like, yeah, the like the lock doesn't work. It's so weird. And he was like, that's really weird. Like, why wouldn't the key open the lock? Like, that doesn't make any sense. So anyways, we are laying in bed that night and I'm about to fall asleep. And like that situation for some reason is like percolating in my brain. Like it just keeps playing and playing and playing. My brain finally goes and plays it again. And I realize that I'm using the gold key on my keys versus the silver key. And the gold key is the house key to my mom's house. And the silver key is the house key to my house. And I was like, huh, but how did the first two locks open? So then I mentioned it to my husband and he said he only the top lock was locked, like the last lock was locked. So the first three locks, that I, like the first, the first two that I did that actually unlocked, the reason they moved is because they weren't locked in the first place. So yeah, anyways, well, and the locks didn't move, but the like knobs, you know? Um, but yeah. So anywho, use the wrong key. Could, and so I made him get up to let me in because I couldn't get into my house because I was using the wrong house key. Uh, but yeah, good times. That was good. I feel like that's an underrated, uh, symptom. <laughs> this is, is the, the change in your, uh, higher cognitive functioning. I haven't been super emotional. Um, I thought I would be, uh, cause I'm not like a big crier unless I'm angry. Um, in which if I'm like angry or frustrated, I'll cry. Those are like, that's like my go-to. I'm an Aries. <laughs> so I, yeah, that's my go-to for crying. But I, I, I've cried more than I feel like I normally do, but I don't, I was picturing it different and I was picturing like kind of like the caricatures that they show on TV of pregnant ladies like I was sort of picturing more of that like of the crazy mood swings and all that stuff and I haven't really had that there's been a couple there was like one instance of me where my husband said something and I was crying and I told him that I understood that I was being unreasonable but I it was still upsetting me <laughs> um but there that only happened once and uh, he felt like I actually was being reasonable. Or maybe he just told me that because he's smart. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's the only time I can think of that. Like, in the moment, I was like, I I feel this feels disproportionate to, to the moment. And I can tell and recognize that I'm overreacting right now. So that's that's been, I feel like, pretty good. Uh, I guess we could ask my husband to verify that. I would say I am on the more irritable side like I mentioned that I said I was starting this video with. I just have a really low tolerance for things. I feel like I look weird without brows. I have to decide what wig I wanna pull on, put on, but I think that was everything I wanted to talk about. So I'm gonna go finish getting ready. I will show you the finished look. Um, This is the uh, Chelsea Smith Crowns wig, the style Tisdale. I feel like I need to do something to the front of it because it just feels like it's just like straight down. So I don't know if I need to just like use a heat comb to try and like comb this back or or like trim the front pieces. I don't know. There's something about this. When I tried it on with the lace still on, I really liked it and I felt like it looked good. I also naturally with my own hair tuck my hair behind my ears, but I didn't feel like gluing this down and the tabs are coming up. But anyways, sorry. But this is the finished look. Here we are. Really quick before I move on to tell you like what products I put on my face since I didn't tell you while we were doing the video. And then I'll share my thoughts on the, the Dreamer collection as well. I uh, hope this video wasn't like too negative. I hate putting or seeing like negative content on social media. I just feel like there's so much negativity in the world and things that we truly do need to be negative about that like silly stuff like kind of some of the complaints that I had in this video like I don't I I usually don't like that kind of content but I hope it was still entertaining and it was all taken as very lighthearted. I know there's like real problems in the world that that warrant you know feeling some type of way about everything I talked about is not that big of a deal. As I was getting ready, I was like, I know somebody's going to say something in the comments about that. And then, you know, it's funny, I was watching the collab video that Rachel uh, 
is it Palmieri? I don't know how to say her last name, but Rachel and Angelica, um, from Angelica Nikvist did, um, where they were like reacting to things people say they hate influencers do. And one of the things was like, apologize for blah, 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 or <laughs> put a disclaimer or whatever. And they were talking about how it's like, when you get comments about certain things, you it then film videos thinking through like, what am I going to get a comment on? What do I need to address so that I don't have to see comments? And it's not even that like, you don't want to, it's, it's like that you're trying to protect your peace. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, I know that I'm going to get a comment about this and it's going to bother me. So let me try and like mitigate that before that comment comes in. And then sometimes the comment still comes in anyway, but it's, uh, that's, I don't know. I think in, until you have filmed videos, put them out, had them watched by people outside of your circle, it is, uh, you don't get it until you get it. And then you're like, I see what, what people are talking about. And I can't even imagine at their levels, because they have way more subscribers than I do, I can't even imagine what their comments look like. I feel like at some point you get lucky that you don't actually see every comment, because who has time for that? I'm small enough that I can, I still definitely have capacity to see every single comment that comes in. So, so let's chat about what is on my face. So obviously I used the Dreamer eyeshadow palette. Let me grab the palette. So here it is. Um, first of all, just to give my two cents, I think this packaging is gorgeous, stunning, amazing, incredible. Uh, second, we use these six shades over here. When I did my first look, I used these six shades. So I was like, let's just do a look with the other six shades. Um, I do really like the look. I've seen so many gorgeous looks with this palette that are using like the pinks and the purples together. So I really want to pull it back out for that. I enjoy this palette quite a bit. It's not, the shimmers are not shifty, but they're really sparkly. And then the shade uh, Dream State down here has like a hollow chrome like sparkliness, which like, so like multiple colored sparkles to it. But none of these are multi-chromes or duochromes. I mean, this purple maybe has like a slightly blue sheen to it. It might be a duochrome. Um, but yeah, I, I, okay, maybe the purple shimmer that I used today, Tranquil, and then maybe this fantasy shade, uh, those could be classified as duochromes, possibly, but they're not like the shiftiest shimmer shades ever. That's not a bad thing, though. I don't need every shade to shift. I'm just letting you know if you were looking at it thinking it was like a shifty sh shade because so much of indie makeup is shifty shadows now. This isn't the shiftiest palette, but I really like this color story. I think it's really nice. And then... I used my Melt Cosmetics and Bailey Sarian uh, Nightshade Ultra Matte Gel Liner. Um, so that's the eyeliner that I have. In the waterline, we're using About Face Line Artist in Devil's Diary. And then, yeah, I think that's it on the eyes. Oh, I started off with my Hourglass Veil Primer. I'm almost out of that, so I'm gonna have to switch back to my about face one, cause that's the one that I have next up and I don't wanna buy more eyeshadow primer until I need to. My hands are so dirty cause I put dry shampoo in this wig to tone down the shine a little bit. And then I ran my fingers through it and now I just feel dry shampoo on my hands and it's like a sensory experience that I'm not enjoying right now. <laughs> lashes, I'm using the MUA Lash This Style Penelope is the lashes that I have on. I use the Benefit Fan Vest Mascara. Eyes are done. For brows, I used the Groundworks palette from Danessa Myricks. We used the shade Chisel to outline the brow. And then I used my NYX brow pen to fill in the brows. Use my Half Magic brow gel to gel my brows. Primer, I have the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I used the NARS Night Swan Light Reflecting Eye Brightener and then the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer under my eyes. I use the Danessa Myricks Cream Contour Balm to do my cream contour. The foundation I have on is the About Face, the Performer Skin Perfecting Foundation. I wore this yesterday, this foundation. Um, maybe not yesterday, it was, might have been two days ago, and it did not look good two days ago. Um, so I don't know what I did. It looks okay today. We'll see how it wears. But it was really weird. I put it on two, a couple days ago and I was like, why does this look so bad all of a sudden? So um, as of today, I think it looks all right. So I don't know what I did a couple days ago, but anyways, uh, we have my Gucci bronzer as the bronzer. <laughs> For blush, I use the Full Fantasy Blush Palette from Laura Lee Los Angeles and Lunar Beauty. We mix these two pink shades for the blush. Then for highlight, we use the Dreamer Highlight Trio. We're using my favorite shade, which is Days. This highlighter here, it is, it's so pretty. And then I use my Gucci powder as my powder and all-nighter setting spray. Oh, and then lipstick. I am using the Vision lipstick, 
which is from the Dreamer collection. I have only not used, I've used Vision and then the other one, which I don't remember the name and I can't find it. It's probably in my purse, but I've used those two lipsticks from the collection. The only one I haven't used is like the, it's like zzz, like the ZZZ, like your zzz, like, like sleeping. You get what I'm saying? But it's this dark purple. I did not feel that that would, it would go with the eye look. It wouldn't go with my dress. So I didn't use that one today, but that's the only lipstick I haven't tried. I really like the formula on the unearthly lipsticks because they're more of like a satin. And so they, I feel like they're, they're about as, <laughs> I'm like, they're a satin finish and they're about as matte as I'm willing to get on my lips. I feel like they stay in place pretty well. There is obviously some transfer because they're not a matte or like a super dried matte, but I feel like they stay pretty well. They're pigmented, they're smooth, and they don't irritate my lips like a matte lipstick would. And I have really, really dry lips, so I'm, I'm appreciative of that. But anyways, as far as the Dreamer collection goes, I really like it. I'm super happy with it. Uh, if I, I mean, I think you can only buy the palette by itself or the whole collection. And honestly, I really like this highlighter trio. So if you were debating the whole collection, I say go for it because I do think the lip colors are wearable too. Yeah, you have that dark purple, but this shade Vision, I think is a really pretty shade. And then I think the other shade is a lighter shade. So I feel like I don't know. I just feel like the lipsticks are really good colors um, that like, like, like colors that you'd actually wear. It's not like you're getting like a green lipstick that you're like, I'm going to buy this whole collection and not even use that. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, if you just want the palette, go for the palette. I think it's really beautiful. I like it a lot. Um, but yeah, those are my kind of my thoughts on that. And uh, I think that's everything. I don't know how much I am willing, like I, my husband and I have already talked about like, not posting like if we post pictures of our son it's going to be on our private like personal accounts um i don't think we're going to share a whole bunch of him on social media like where people we don't know can see him or have access to him um just for like safety reasons so so i won't have anything like that um we might change our minds on that we're not like hard and fast but just like right now that's where we're at comfort wise and then um sorry this like one piece of hair is sticking out I saw it in the <laughs> in the reflection and then but like I don't know like do people care about like postpartum experience like wanting to learn more for me when I wasn't pregnant I didn't care at all to like seek out that content but then as being a pregnant person and worried about having a baby and like postpartum, I have been like interested in hearing people's like birth stories and like after labor experiences. So I don't know if you would all want to see a get ready with me once I, you know, have had all of that happen and have experienced it, but um, let me know <laughs> in the comments down below if you'd like that. Um, I do feel like this was pretty cathartic for me, so I might do an occasional one where it's like a Let's do a get ready with me where I just complain <laughs> for most of it. <laughs> complain and tell funny stories. I feel like some of that was funny stories, right? It wasn't all complaining. It was just like 75% complaining and 25% funny stories. Also, feel free to comment and be like, none of those stories were that funny. That's okay. I can take that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it for me. I will see you all next time. Bye.